Hey everybody, today on the camera department, we shot porn. But first, this. Dawson, the young millennial that he is, just stuck an SD card. Where'd you put it, Dawson? CD drive. In the CD drive. Porn so now we have to fix it. You want me to get it? I can get it. <laughs> no, it's no joke. Can you fix it? Take part of computer. <laughs> for real. That really happened. This is not a this is not a gag for the show. This really happened. Dawson. I'm blushing. <laughs> you just put a you put an SD card into the CD slot. Well I wasn't like looking and I just started feeling up on the side of the Mac and I just stuck it in like the first one I felt at the beginning of the know. <laughs> Like I said, we shot porn. We're gonna show you that. Don't worry. Uh, it'll be after a few things. But the other thing we wanted to talk about that kind of relates to that in its own weird sort of way, we wanted to do a lens comparison test because we've we've often been asked what's our favorite lens. Well, you know, we it's hard to answer. I don't really have a favorite lens. Asking me if I have a favorite lens is like asking me if I have a favorite child. And I'd put both of them in a drawer if I had to. That's probably not appropriate. That said, we wanted to sit down and look at the Leica 12 to 60 made by Panasonic and Leica and the Sigma Art 18 to 35. We put them side by side, did some tests. So first, let's look at some tests and then we'll look at porn. So we're gonna take a look at some of this Leica and Sigma footage. Uh, we shot them kind of side by side, put them through some tests. Um, only because we're thinking about purchasing one of the lenses and we wanted to know how it would complement or how it would affect certain ways we shoot things. We have projects coming up. So we like to think of the lenses in that in that kind of space, right? So the idea is, is think about the tonality of the lens, how it receives light, how it uh, changes, any tweaks, what we love, what are the characteristics that we can identify knowing the projects that we use these cameras like GH5s on. Though we could even throw the Sigma onto a RED. Um, in this case, we're just thinking about it for that. So the first thing we have here is distortion charts. So the first one up here is a Sigma chart and um, distortion looks pretty even. I mean, it's nothing crazy. You can see a shift there um, and even side by side, there's not much of a difference aside from a little bit of the way the light is bouncing in. I have not changed the f-stop on these whatsoever, but you can kind of see in the center frame on the left or on the right side there, that is the Leica, the left is the Sigma, kind of an interesting take. So then we want to see what an interview looks like. So maybe this is an interview. We got depth of field, Dawson kind of walking through the frame. Again, this is the Sigma. Jeff's got the color chart upside down for reasons. And uh, Dawson lands into frame. It looks pretty good. Nothing really major about it. I like the fact that we can knock it down a good bit. Now we see the Leica and there's an immediate reaction to me where I see a little bit of a roll off issue uh, in terms of the way the highlights handle and the blacks are handled. Again, trying to match the step, the F stops and the lenses as much as they can. But what's really interesting is here I've zoomed in on Jeff's face. So the left side is Sigma, right side is Leica. And you can kind of see that there is a nice sharpness to that to that Sigma versus the softness of the Leica. So the, the, the skin tone in the Leica has a softness to it and the Sigma has that kind of sharp detailed quality. The other side of it is, if you notice, it's very slight, but there is a pink uh, hue differentiation between Jeff's skin tones. So Jeff's tones look a little bit different uh, on the left image than they do on the right. There's been no adjustment. We're just shooting a natural profile, uh, one of our custom ones when we're in a hurry. So then we want to do some detail work. So this content is an old Rusty C we have. And so you can kind of see the detail on it. This first shot again is Sigma. It is super sharp, the details there. If I were doing product shots, the Sigma would be very, very handy to utilize for this reason because the detail is standing out and looks fantastic in my opinion. So then when we shift over here to the Leica image, what we're gonna see with the Leica is we punched in a little bit more, trying to match the frame size, it didn't happen, but the Leica gave us a little bit closer image anyway. Detail's great out of the Leica, but it's not as sharp Meaning maybe if I was doing a product element here where I didn't want to show all the flaws, I might want to use the Leica over that of the Sigma. And that's the same case we've done when we've shot with uh, Leica Sumacron C's is we often use those over cooks because we want Sumacron C's to blend our talent into or subject into the background versus a cook where it separates from the background considerably amount more. So it's kind of thinking in terms of even cine lenses. So then we get even closer texture details. 
And this Sigma lens is insane. Again, seeing all these sharp, beautiful details. I missed focus a few times, but I did better focus with this Sigma lens than I do with the Leica fly on wire stuff. But looking at the detailed texture elements is beautiful. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The color replication is fantastic. Uh, the rust is really popping. And again, nothing's been done to this. We're just showing you raw images. Absolutely gorgeous details there. I can almost touch that rust. It feels almost 3D. This stuff is great. It's beautiful, but the detailed difference, it doesn't feel, whoopsie, it doesn't feel quite as, uh, as much as it's like popping out to me. And someone was describing 3D the other day to me, whatever, I don't want to get into that conversation. Hey, but look at the separation. It's still very pretty, but it blends a little bit more, which makes for a nice image. It's not bad. It's just not quite as punchy to me as that Sigma lens. And again, I like the Leica. So where does the Leica really shine? Well, this is where I think it gets interesting. The Leica on skin outdoor, I think is really pretty. This is the Leica lens here. And Jeff is wholly and beautifully separated from that background. Um, it is a nice clean image. Uh, we walked it in close. You might see the shadow from the microphone. There you go. And so this is the Sigma. So I walked in the Sigma a little bit more to kind of separate them. You do start to get close enough, again, because of the throw distance, where I can't really grab that as much. That's just a lens thing. But in terms of the color, they look pretty even. Again, I still see that little bit of a pink hue difference between the two images that I think uh, the Sigma has. It's kind of like doing a red and a scarlet. Just threw the color chart in there just to show you in case you saw it. Here's the other moment. So we shoot a lot of lifestyle stuff. So what we like to look for is slow-mo lens flares, walking around someone as they're probably talking with B-roll. So this Sigma, look at the flare on the Sigma. It is punchy. It's almost that the little orange dot there, that orange orb, that UFO flying through the frame. It's almost too much in my opinion. It's distracting. And though I'm a big fan of lens flares and especially this sort of look, that feels like a little bit too much. So it's a very pretty piece. Um, it doesn't really work for me in the slow-mo side. As far as the color replication, everything looks fantastic. Though, watch the Leica in this next se uh, sequence here. The Leica, all of a sudden, the color is punched up. Like, it just feels more saturated in the image. It just has a punch to it. And again, nothing has changed, shooting the same stop, trying to match them the best we can from focal length reasons. Now, look how subtle this flare is. And I had to work hard to even introduce it into the bottom of the frame. It's just the way the Leica read it out. But Jeff just has a little bit more of a glow to him that is more more in line with what we're doing as storytellers, as filmmakers. This is the kind of look we enjoy uh, for some of our docu-style type content. I love the Leica lens flares in slow-mo. I think they look phenomenal. I think this stuff looks great. And the color pop, look at the red in the background. Look how much more punchy it is. So then of course we switch away to the close-up obligatory leaves passing in front of the sun shot. In this case it's palm leaves because we're in the south where it is warm not so warm today, but it's still mostly warm. And, oh, I'm sorry, this is the Sigma lens. And the reason I can tell it's a Sigma is looking at that orange dot. That's a, a characteristic of the lens, I would call it that. So you can see that little orange orb there. Very pretty, it's gorgeous. The detail on the back of the leaves is tremendously better looking than this in the Leica shot. It kind of blends away in the Leica to me. Again, it's somewhat subjective, but look how nice the lens flare is. It's not as, uh, invasive. It's a very subtle, it's there, you know it's there, you see it, there's an orb there, but it doesn't feel as prominent and in your face as as the Sigma does. So just looking at those, it led us to a point of asking the question, what would happen if we then took this exact footage, uh, or took these exact lenses rather, put them side by side and shot some similar content. So what we decided to do was just shoot some general similar content, and that's where the porn comes in. So we took Leica, and we took the Sigma, so this is the Leica 12 to 60 and the Sigma 18 to 35 art photo, not the cine version, and we decided to go shoot porn food porn. So here's a little bit of food porn. It's nothing really crazy. It was for a client, but here is some of that footage. Go.
Okay, so that's kind of our look at these two different lenses because we were curious for ourselves. And I think the takeaways that me and Jeff kind of both came across were that we like the weight of the Sigma, though in some cases that could be annoying. We love the focus on the Sigma compared to that of the Leica. We love the uh, sharpness of this lens in certain circumstances, it's fantastic. What we still love about the Leica is the general creaminess that that lens provides. It, it's, it's a beautiful, creamy, nice image. The lens flares out of it are subtle. If you want to control them a little bit better, they seem to respond to light and feel a little bit more in that lifestyle sort of dreamy vibe as opposed to those hard pronounced flares that we were seeing out of the Sigma in our little lens flare test. Color replication from both lenses seems identical except for a little bit of a hue bias. What appears to be a little bit warmer image coming out of the Leica than that of the Sigma. The Sigma is a little bit cooler than, than that of the Leica. Uh, certainly on the exteriors, you could see it in the reds. There's a little bit more of a punch there. Not much, but it's just enough to be there. And then the Leica being so light is an advantage when you need to shoot run and gun very quickly. Obviously the throw distance on the Leica is a 12 to 60, um, but I don't know, there's a weird thing. If I had to pick one now, I think I would change my tune. I think I've become a little bit more of a Sigma 18 to 35 fan. Um, you do need a speed booster to use it on a GH5, but if you're shooting full frame like the red, which I wouldn't put this on a red, but if you did, great, good for you. Uh, or if you're shooting like, you know, Canon or Sony, you're gonna need an adapter for the Sony, but if you're, you're shooting those others, then, you know, it, it works pretty well. And I think it's a good, robust lens. It feels beefy. And it's only like 600 bucks, so it's not a terrible price point. I just wish the Leica had a little more body to it. If it had a bigger body about it, I'd be even happier about it and, and maybe run more. The other side too is the Leica obviously is, is not a fixed uh, stop. So you do have a variable stop rate as you punch in. Uh, your stop drops versus this uh, Sigma Art, which is a 2.8 all the way through, which is fantastic. Uh, at the end of the day, it's nice to have that 2A2 on uh, when you need it. And then with the speed booster, you gain a little bit more of, of light out of it. Again, not a low light lens. Um, not one of those guys that preaches that stuff, but it is nice to have a little bit more if you wanted to knock down the background and really just play with it. We did shoot this a good bit with a 72 millimeter variable ND by Tiffin. And then we have a ProMaster or a Pro, whatever, expensive, what is this one? We have a, yeah, ProMaster HGX, which is their higher grade one. We shot HGX on the Lumix. Uh, I didn't see much of a difference in the two in that case. Whatever. It is what it is. We showed you some lens form. What is your favorite? Tell us in the comments below. We'd love to have a chat about it. Maybe you've got a better idea of another lens you want us to test. We opened a new playlist called Kiss Our Glass, where we do nothing but talk about lenses. We'll add more features as we go along. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Somewhere around here, some links for you to click on and join us when we do live shows typically on tuesdays at 2 p.m central tuesdays 2 p.m central live shows we're out goodbye happy turkey day <laughs>